humor with heart and today we're going to look at laughter in language. Now it's true that oftentimes grammar can make us feel like groaning but is there a way that it can bring us some giggles? We're going to be looking at that today. Hi, I'm Dr. K.P. McKee, founder and executive director of a spacious place creativity and spirituality center. And as we go through today's practice, we would love to hear from you. Um, you can enter questions or comments into the comment box on your uh, computer or mobile device. And for today, we have very few supply needs. You just need something that you would use for writing with. So either some paper and a writing utensil or a computer or mobile device with word processing capabilities. Um, so let's just get started. Um, language across the years has had many uses for finding ways to create holy and healthful humor. And we're going to look at just a few of those today. I created us a laughter language book to kind of walk us through this. So the first thing is the homonym. And a homonym basically are two different words with that sound the same but have different meanings. And they might be spelled the same or they might not. Uh, it's all about pronunciation. And so this particular homonym we're going to be using is from the uh, opera The Pirates of Penzance by Gilbert and Sullivan. And based on certain pronunciations of two words, uh, there is a hilarious result. So the two words are often and orphan. And myself and my off-camera helper here will not entirely try to do the British accents that will make this work even better, but uh, maybe it will help to actually hear them pronounced often and orphan so you can get the idea of how the homonym works. So I'm going to be the general, and David is going to be the pirate king. Tell me, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Here we are again. I ask you, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Often. Yes, orphan. Have you ever known what it is to be one? I say, often, 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 often. I don't think we quite understand one another. I ask you, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan and you say orphan? As I understand you, you are merely repeating the word orphan to show that you understand me. I didn't repeat the word often. Pardon me, you did indeed. I only repeated it once. True, but you repeated it. But not often. Stop! I think I see where we're getting confused. When you say, said orphan, did you mean orphan, a person who has lost his parents, or often, frequently? Ah, I beg pardon. I see what you mean. Frequently. Ah, you said often frequently. No, only once. Exactly. You said often frequently, not only once. Another form of using language for humor is the pun. Now, there are a couple of ways to use puns. One is the use of a word or phrase with more than one meaning so that its secondary use comes as a humorous surprise. And um, for an example of that, we have a quote that's attributed to Oscar Wilde as his last words, in which he says, This wallpaper and I are fighting a duel to the death. Either it goes or I do. So the pun here is with the word goes. Either you take down and get rid of the wallpaper or Oscar Wilde dies. The other way to use a pun is that you have two words that sound pretty much alike and we use them uh, in a way that creates a play on those words and their meanings. Uh, like this example that's attributed to Mark Twain. We don't know if he said it, but it certainly sounds like him. He says, Denial ain't just a river in Egypt. And this is a play on the word denial in its real meaning and the fact that it sounds like two words, the Nile. Um, during the egg dying season of the year, our family com really enjoys making egg dying puns. And we encourage you to try this yourself. 
They're extremely easy to do, extraordinarily fun, and no, I do not exaggerate. Exactly. <laughs> uh, we're going to put some of these together with what is called a Mad Lib. Uh, and this is a fun practice that you can do with your family, with anybody actually. Uh, basically, a Mad Lib is a pun on ad lib. And it's a game in which a reader asks players to substitute words for words for blanks that are in the either a poem or a story could even be a song. And that then after those contributions are made, the reader reads them aloud often with hilarious results. So we're going to do two Mad Libs um, that are fairly short. Um, one thing about a Mad Lib, it's a good idea to keep it fairly short. We did one on the poem, Twas the Night Before Christmas, and that's absolutely as long as you want to get with a Mad Lib. So I'm going to ask for you to make some suggestions for us, and I'm just going to write them in here, and then I will read both of the results. So if you have some suggestions, uh, please do enter them into the comment box, and then we will enter them into the blanks here. So first of all, I need a type of animal. Arachnid. All right, spider. My spider senses are tingling. Okay, we need a part of an animal. Hoof. A color? Puce. A type of precipitation? Sleet. All right, a past tense verb. This is when we're getting into the grammar part a little bit more. Salsed. All right, and we're going to get, go with the arachnid here again. Uh, a verb. Hurl. All right. This is present tense. It's happening right now. All right, we need arachnid here. A location of some kind. Whoville. Okay. And a measurement of time. Five milliseconds. A type of legislation. Constitutional amendment. A name for a group, like a sports team or a club or something. Moose Lodge. Okay. Another verb. Wrinkle. Uh, yet another verb. Hack. And one more verb. Whale. This is not the whale like the animal. This is like to whale away at something. And, um, and then the last one. We need the animal again. And we will be happy to send you the templates for these two and the also um, Night Before Christmas one just to get you started. If that would be helpful to you, um, you can just email kaye at aspaciousplace.com and we will send them to you. All right, so I'm going to read you the first one here with these awesome substitutions. You may recognize the poem. Mary had a little arachnid. Its hoof was puce as sleet. And everywhere that Mary salsas, the arachnid was sure to hurl. The arachnid followed her to Whoville, one five milliseconds, which was against the constitutional amendment. It made the moose lodge wrinkle and hack to wail an arachnid at school. All right. 
last one. All right, we need a direction. North by northwest. A land formation. Canyon. Verb. Skulk. Ooh, nice verb. Uh, type of container. Beaker. And um, liquid of some kind. Diet Coke. <laughs> oh, a personal favorite. Uh, direction. Anti-clockwise. A body part. Earlobe. And an ing verb. Hulking. All right. Maglet. Jack and Jill went north by northwest up the canyon to skulk a beaker of Diet Coke. Jack fell anti-clockwise and broke his earlobe, and Jill came hulking after. So you can see how these work like this. And you can find pre-made ones too. They're available um, online and in various bookstores. So if you want something that's already written, you can do that as well. If you found this helpful, please do like us on Facebook. Uh, you can also re-watch this on Facebook, on YouTube, and on our site, www.aspaciousplace.com. And we'll be getting back together on February 9th at the same time, 2.30 Central Standard Time, to look at some other ways we can have some healthful and holy humor. So let's close with a prayer. You are the God who created the duck platypus, a child named Laughter, and all of us with our capacity to giggle, to chortle, to belly laugh. Author of Holy and Healthful Humor, we give you thanks with a mild wide grin. Amen.